Hi, I'm John Ferguson, and I'd like to read to you today from my new book, King Solomon's Deadly Legacy. A British scientist travels to the time of King Solomon and discovers our world is making the same mistakes as King Solomon and heading for the same outcomes, division, invasion, and even exile. The story begins with Simon traveling to Malaysia seeking a cure for his daughter's leukemia. But when he gets there, things don't work out well. Simon and Kurt drove north from Kuala Lumpur through miles of green-black plantations of oil palm. The destruction of the native forest grieved Simon. He shook his head. After finding their guides, they tramped into the sultry mountains, 500 meters above the pollution of the plains. Simon breathed deeply, enjoying the fresh air. The climb through the jungle had been steep and taxing, but Simon loved these forests. He knew the plants like close friends. Several times he stopped to admire a brilliant flower or the broad fins of a giant tree. The lowland flora eventually gave way to mountain forests thickly hung with mosses and orchids. He tingled with excitement. Somewhere here his prize awaited. At dusk, the guides made camp by a crystal pool beneath a cascading waterfall. Simon shed his sweaty clothes and collapsed into the water. Ah, that is good. Kurt flicked his wet hair from his face and stood in the shadows. Yeah, but this is a strange place, no? There is something funny about it. Just a big hole? Why is it here? Simon laughed. For us as women. Something glinted on the floor of the pool. What's that? Simon swam to the stony bottom. The light shifted and the stone gleamed for only an instant. He grabbed it and pushed to the surface. Here's some gold. He grinned and flung the pebble to his friend. Kurt caught it and raised his eyebrows. Sure, it's heavy. Maybe it is. Wait, there's more. Simon dived again. He'd seen a larger piece near the falls. The stone glinted and he lunged for it. A solid weight filled his hand. The surface seemed farther away than he expected. He twisted to push off the bottom, but the current dragged him down, its massive turbulence rolling him beneath, backward, deeper beneath the falls. Realization struck with such force, he almost breathed in a lungful of water. What a fool! The pool had no river flowing out. Instead, the current flowed into an underground tunnel that Simon was being sucked into. Panic filled him as, he, as his lungs burned for air. I'm going to die! His foot struck the tunnel wall, then his shoulder. The darkness engulfed him. Simon visits King Solomon several times during the king's life. And finally, the king, having fallen away from God, rejects Simon's counsel. And Simon, once back in the UK again, grieves over the loss of his friend. After tea, he escaped to the common and sat beside the dyke where he used to race buttons, his horse. It smelled of time. Beyond Selfie Hill, the River Avon was a silver pencil line. Cowslips and early purple orchids carpeted the slopes. Skylarks trilled above him and warblers chiff-chaffed from the bushes. At least England was alive and well. Solomon's rejection had hurt, but the king's hardened heart hurt more. How many warnings had he dismissed? How tragic that such a great man could fall. Was it merely the wealth and the women? No, Simon said aloud. The prophets were right. It was a chill traced his spine. Suddenly he saw the parallels. For what are the gods of the 21st century? Money, knowledge, also known as science, projects, even sport. 
Has the world learned from history? Or are we all making the same mistakes? His grandparents lost their great house with seeming equanimity, content to let it go and help others. Different generation, different culture. His own generation, drugs, sex and communes. God had been quietly tucked away in the attic of the 20th century, along with its war memorabilia and grandmother's lace-up shoes. If you'd like a copy of this book, it's available on jfm.org.nz.